thank you very much, Ben. And yeah, as already said, I, as already Ben told you, I'm Gent. I'm a data engineer at Cow Protocol, and the team behind CowSwap. And I'll be. I'm really happy here to show, uh, to present to you the talk "Do Cows Slipless," uh, which is basically just an exploratory analysis of the difference between expected and executed prices in DEX aggregators. So let's get started right away. Um, let me highlight just briefly what I'll be talking about today. Uh, I'll give you a short introduction. I'll tell you what slippage is, how it works, and how it impacts traders. And we'll be talking about the data and how it was collected for the visualizations we'll be showing. Uh, we'll be going over the most interesting visual, um, visual explorations of the slippage across aggregators. And we'll, at the end, we'll summarize this with our most noteworthy findings and a short conclusion. As always, there is also time at the end for questions. Before we start, being a data engineer myself, I want to gather some data from you. And I'd like to ask here everyone, ideally by a show of hands, who here knows what slippage actually is? Awesome. <laughs> and I would love to follow that up with a follow-up question of like, who here got less in their wallet compared to what they were shown in the aisle while trading at an exchange or aggregator? Obviously, so uh, a lot of you are already aware of that and that's really nice. And this is the reason because we, we, were, we should look more into that because slippage impacts a lot of our traders in, uh, every day. And traditionally, Slippage is just simply the difference between the expected and executed prices while trading. And just happens because when an aggregator shows you a quote, time can pass, the prices can change, and once you sign and execute your trade, the prices have changed. And so this, that, that's just how it works. And traditionally, this is also a very tricky problem for aggregators because for them, they always want to show you the best price possible, but they also don't want to like Overpromise you anything or underpromise because if they overpromise and they don't get the prices they shown, you're like unsatisfied. And if you show the less, you may be enticed to trade at another aggregator which showed you a better price. And this leads to the question of like if someone says, "Hey, again, I'm, I have a really fast finger and I immediately sign the transaction, the quote when I see it, I should be safe." And unfortunately, that's not really the case because like the biggest reason for slippage tradition is that. Two, when two people want the same thing, one of them is always going to get the worst price. And this is just because of how liquidity pools work. Uh, the first person going and putting in one token and getting the other, there's going to be less tokens in what they got from, and the second person will always get a worse price. So there's like no way of working around that. Another, and basically this is here uh, where the slippage tolerance parameter comes in handy, because this lets you like say, uh, how much of the price you're shown in the quote, uh, how much less you're willing to accept. And this is really, this is like, in, you can see this in every aggregator. And if you go and you can see the slippage torrents, and you can set that. And in this case, uh, if you want to trade like 0 0.1 ETH for 192 DAI, uh, with a slippage torrents parameter of 0 0.5, you're just saying that I'm willing to accept $1 less just so my trade gets executed. And if you look actually at the data when you sign your transaction, you can always see that. This is all, it's, it can have different names, but usually it's like the amount of minimum returned. And here in this case, we can see that's 192 die. And basically you're saying that, yeah, I'm okay with that and I'm willing to take that. But I'll, like, albeit another less frequent reason for slippage is just that uh, there are bad actors who can exploit your slippage tolerance. And these people, because these people can exploit your slippage torrents because once you sign the transaction, the aggregator puts uh, your uh, transaction in the public mempool and it's out of their control and out of your control as well. So basically, their bad actors can take advantage of your slippage tolerance parameter, exploit it, and do a trade before you and give you a negative price and then gain profit from that. And these are known as MEV attacks. And basically, uh, we won't be going into much detail and how they work, what they are, and what type of MEV attacks they are. But let's just move on with the knowledge that there are bad actors who can exploit our uh, slippage torrents and gain profit from it. And before we start to get to the good stuff uh, of the actual visual explorations, uh, let me just uh, talk, about, talk to you about the data collection process and which aggregators we've compared. As you can see here, uh, we have data from 0x, CowSwap, and 1inch. 
and uh, Xerox in a blog post article uh, re released, I think, in April this, uh, this year. They released over 670,000 trades, which happened during April and November of 2021, and uh, that were gone through the Xerox API and on the Ethereum block mainnet. Um, uh, for CowSwap, we analyzed over 36,000 trades that happened during the last two months, more specifically between 4th of July and 4th of September. And last but not least, for one inch, we'll also look at the trades for the last two months that happened also between the same time frame. But as you can see here, uh, because not all uh, because not all one inch trades uh, contain the uh, quoted price in the on-chain call data, uh, the, these trades we've analyzed only represent 14 percent of all of their trades that happened during that time, which leads nicely to what is actually required to uh, calculate slippage. And for that, three data points are the most important. You need the worst price, which you usually can get from the chain data. You need the quoted price, which traditionally you can get from internal databases, like in the case of CowSwap and ZeroX. But for one, uh, for one inch in this case, it is also encoded in the on-chain data. And you need the executed price, so basically the price that you got into your wallet and that got, you got executed with. And as you can see here, basically the first natural question that comes to mind is like, what type of flippage is there the most of in trades? And uh, as you can see here, like zero slippage, is, the majority of trades get executed with zero slippage. It is worth mentioning though that this doesn't equal actually 100% zero, zero slippage, but this, is like, in, the, this includes like a boundary of 0.1% above zero and below zero, just so that we can also like widen the gap a little bit. And we can, as you can see, like the remainder of the trades really are very differ, different from e for each aggregator. As you can see on the left, uh, for 0x, around 33% of the remaining trades are with negative slippage, and 17% are with positive one. Whereas for CowSwap in the middle, it's actually almost the polar opposite, where you can see that 36% of their trades have positive slippage, and only 15% of them have negative slippage. And one probable reason for that is that the existence of cows in uh, CowSwap, which uh, I believe Anna mentioned earlier, uh, which enables the peer-to-peer -peer trading for, our, for the traders on CowSwap, gives them both parties better positive slippage and therefore increases the positive slippage percentage. And on the right, where you can see one inch, which differs, I think, the most uh, from, all, from the two other aggregators for two reasons. Uh, one, you can see that they have a higher percentage of negative, sli of zero, uh, zero percent of slippage rate of almost 68%. And they have 31% of negative slippage trade, but only 1% of positive slippage trade. And this is just because how the one-inch business model operates, uh, which by the direct vote of their governance system, one-inch takes positive slippage and forwards it to their user referrals and also to their treasury. So, in, and realistically, if that wouldn't, wouldn't be the case, it would probably look very similar to zero X. But because we're looking at this from a user's perspective, that's what the user sees. So they, uh, they see only 1% slip, positive, slippage, po uh, positive slippage. And another interesting thing to look at is actually the slippage tolerance parameters the users use across different aggregators. For this, we'll use, these values are usually round. So we've categorized them into five big categories, namely 3%, 2%, 1%, 0 0.5, and others. And immediately here, you can see the default uh, slippage tolerance parameters for each aggregator. If you look at 0x, you can see that most of our trades are like executed with 3%, which was their default parameter 2021. The next two most popular categories are 1 and 0.5%, which, which are the default values from, for Matcha, which is an aggregator which uses the 0x API in the background. In the middle, for CowSwap, you can see that most of, our, most of the trades get executed with a 0.5 uh, slippage tolerance value. And on the, the next interesting thing is that the others category compared to Xerox has a steady rise from 7 to almost to 21%, which lets us, lets us tell that the users actually are far more customizing the slippage tolerance values on CowSwap compared to Xerox. And this rise continues for one inch, where for, except the default slippage parameter, 
the default slippage parameter uh, like of 1%, which is the most popular one for one inch with 36. The next most popular category is others with almost 33%, which um, further tells us that users like customizing their values a lot more in one inch compared to the two previous aggregators. It is also worth mentioning that on CallSwap, there are actually no 3% slippage tolerance traits. So actually, the category is not missing, but there aren't any. And if we look now at the slippage histograms of uh, each uh, aggregator, uh, we can see that the two previous findings and uh, explorations we saw already have an impact here. Uh, for example, uh, if we look at 0x, we can see that they have a, a lot more even distribution, but due to their higher negative slippage uh, trades, which we saw in the, first, uh, in the first visualization, the distribution is a little bit skewed to the left, all the way to minus three, three slippage. On the other hand, the high value of the 0.5, minus 0 0.5 slippage tolerance for CowSwap, uh, you can see that the negative slippage stops a lot earlier for there because of the high 75% uh, slippage tolerance usage, and the distribution is skewed a lot more to the right. And for one inch, as you can see, uh, the, po like the positive side is almost non-existent because it is only 1%, and the distribution is very skewed to the left, all the way to 10, minus 10%. And uh, as you can, uh, <coughs> furthermore, uh, and one interesting thing that all of the aggregators share in common are these upticks at the minus, uh, at the negative slippage values of minus 0 0.5, minus 1, minus 2, and minus 3, which could be possible indications of MEV attacks. We will go and look into those further a little bit later. Another interesting pattern emerges if we start categorizing our slippage histogram trades by trade size. And this is really interesting because we uh, categorize the trade sizes from minus from less than ten dollars into six uh, into six categories up to more than a hundred thousand dollars. And here we can see that the smaller the trade size, the more even the distribution. But when the trade size goes starts going up, the spikes become a lot more apparent. And a possible reason for that is that just there is more to exploit from those trade sizes. Basically, in the end, it's just that one percent of a hundred k is a lot more money than one percent of ten dollars. And an interesting thing uh, 0x uh, proposed is a new metric called MEV exhaustion, which is just basically the slippage tolerance exhaustion, which is just a new x-axis, which uh, redefined, is defined as the slippage divided by the slippage tolerance. And basically, when this gets close to 100%, it just means that this, uh, the trade of the user got executed at the worst possible price. And here, a very interesting pattern emerges. You can see that the distribution is very closely stacked on the left near the zero and it starts going down, but near to 100% MEV exhaustion, it starts going up radically again. And basically, this tells us that those trades could be potential MEV attack trades because this could be the intention of a bad actor that exploited all of the slippage tolerance of a user. And these trades, are very good, uh, these trades are very potential trades that could be attacked and therefore should be analyzed by each aggregator further. And that's, uh, that's what basically we did. And 0x and their analysis basically took a subset of those trades with a very high slippage tolerance. And uh, there were around 5,000 trades where they analyzed and looked at the trades using a naive heuristic, uh, basically where they said, if the person trading before and after is the same, the trade was MEV attacked. And they concluded that 90% of all of those trades with a very close to 100% MEV exhaustion were MEV attacked. We did the same for CowSwap and to, uh, took a look at those 100 per, uh, closely to 100% MEV, MEV exhausted trades. And there we found that none of them were actually MEV attacked. And this is probably likely, uh, this is probably prone because of the way uh, orders are first uh, put into the order book for CowSwap and then executed only 15 to 30 minutes later, 15 to 30 seconds later, excuse me. And usually because people trade at the same time when it, and want to buy tokens when they're going up and when they're selling when they're going down, there is a more like this is more likely for the price to not change in their favor, and therefore uh, the waiting waiting time uh, is in not in their favor and could cause the high slippage, to sl high MEV exhaustion we see there. Whereas for one inch, we did the same time, but due to the high number of 100% uh, uh, MEV exhausted trades, we only looked at two subsets of 25 trades each, 
for, from the 100% MEV exhausted trades, and we took a random subset, and we took a subset, and we took the subset of the uh, the trades with the highest slippage torrents, uh, slippage value, and the, from those trades analyzed, we found that 50% 50, 50 of those were actually MEV attacked. And Having uh, finished, the, uh, having done, uh, having analyzed the visualizations, let us recap our most noteworthy findings one more time. And basically, what we learned is that the majority of trades have zero slippage, but the remainder really differs from aggregator to aggregator. Different defaults, different slippage torrents. So, uh, different uh, aggregators have different slippage uh, de default slippage torrents values, and these impact the distribution of slippage torrents. And basically, slippage increases at specific points, which are usually negative round numbers, and these could be possible indicators of MEV attacks. This becomes even more apparent when trades are categorized by value, and basically the slippage exhaustion parameter reveals an intriguing pattern of uh, uh, shifting up to the right, and those 100% MEV exhausted trades should always be analyzed further by each aggregator. And to finally conclude, basically, there are very big differences between, for, uh, what it, in regards of slippage between aggregators and slippage tolerance values. And I'd like for you all to keep the slippage footprint of aggregators in mind when considering your next trading venue. And now, having learned more about slippage and slippage tolerance, be aware that what you see is not always what you get. I'd like to give a shout out to the Zero X team for starting this discussion with their blog article. Uh, they did a very good, ad, very good job and pro provided some really new references for which we used. And also, I'd like to uh, provide the CowSwap and One Inch data in Dune, where you can look up the data we've analyzed. Thank you for your attention, and we're now open for questions. So, unfortunately, due to time constraints, we probably only have time for one or two questions, two because you, he, we actually wound up starting a minute or two later than originally scheduled. Okay. Yeah. So I just had a quick question. Uh, so when you put the slippage tolerance, does it actually limit slippage both ways? Like it limits the positive and the negative slippage? Or excuse me, because I couldn't hear you. When very you put good a certain beginning. slippage tolerance, like on CalSwap or on, or on other dexes too, does it actually limit the slippage both ways? That's a very good question. Um, the slippage tolerance only limits you towards the negative slippage. So if we go back quickly, so I think it was, yeah, this only limits you to the negative slippage. So it says that the, your, the worst acceptable price you accept is 0.5% less. So in this case, you're willing to accept for your 0 0.1 ETH 192 die, but you could at the same time get 200 and uh, it, it's it, like it doesn't limit you to the positive side, at least for zero X and uh, CowSwap, because of one inch's business model where they take the positive surplus and they forward it to your users and to the treasury. There, you're less likely to get positive slippage compared to the two other aggregators. So the the reason usually users would like to set slippage to, uh, larger slippage tolerance is to avoid uh, the transaction fail to fail. Um, did you analyze also the f rate of failed transactions? Uh, that's a very good question as well. In the end, slippage tolerance is just a trade-off of like uh, how safe, uh, like uh, how likely your trade is, be is going to like the risk of your trade failing and how safe you want to be. So the slower, the lower the, the slippage tolerance, the more likely uh, like your trade is going to fail, but the more protected you are. So. And here, we actually didn't look at very specific, like which trades failed, but it is worth mentioning that, for example, for CowSwap, this problem doesn't exist because you don't sign your, your order doesn't get like put, put directly in the public mempool, but it only gets signed uh, into the order book where it says there, and if it doesn't get executed, you don't get uh, charged anything. All right, thank you for an excellent presentation on Thank you very much. Data.